here we are. So normally I stand, but for only five people, I don't know. You can still have me come. I see you a couple meetings. So how are we going to keep these libraries open uh, on some kind of full-time basis? How are you going to arrange that? Going? Well, you know, that's not up to me any longer. I know, you're going to just get out of it. No, 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 I didn't mean it that, didn't mean that way. beautiful building sitting idle all this time all over the county. It's, uh, I'm an educator, and it just irritates me to go in to see it. The idea that we have all these resources and they're not being used. Yeah, well, Same now as I understand here, Eco Point has uh, picked up another four hours. That's what I thought. Correct. That's what I it's going to be open full day, all day on Tuesday. Is my understanding. I think so. It helps. Yeah. So anyway, I understand what you're saying. We got the, you know, we got the, we got the assets here, and uh, yeah, they're just sitting there deteriorating. You know, I'm not being used. And a few years ago, when I was teaching up north, I just semi-retired two years ago. Outside, of, I was teaching outside of Seattle, at North Bend, Snoqualmie, and so I didn't have my computer set up in my summer house, and I had to go use the computer at a library. And I was shocked at how little time it was open, so I, you know, I didn't have access to a computer there. And I live in Sands Valley, so you know, going to Eagle Point or uh, uh, over to Gold Hill. Yeah. Or even run in, if I go up to Butte Falls a lot, or Prospect, I'm, I, I run the hills a lot. That's one of my forms of recreation. And you run the hills, you said? Yeah, I run the hills. That yeah, means, that's what you said, is recreation? Yeah, well, when I say run the hills, it means that I am Norman McCarr. But I love to stop <laughs> with my dog and hike mountains. I mean, I do that a lot. Okay, well, good for Not you. Not as much as I should, I'm going to tell you. Well, well unfortunately, but, uh, starting to look like Dennis Smith. But, not that bad, yeah. <laughs> You're going to tell said that. But anyway, that's what I mean. I, I spend a lot of time on doors, but that's my playground. All of them. Well, you know that uh, when the uh, voters passed the, uh, the library measure, and uh, initially was going to assess, which again, that's the library board now, it's not the board of commissioners. Um, the, the 60 cents originally, they were thinking about putting everybody at 40 hours, and there was and, and rightfully so, I think a, a, a bit of a pushback on that, that because 60 cents was a maximum without going to the voters again to, to raise that. Uh, and I think some of the voters felt betrayed that you was didn't think that that would happen. And so the library board, rightfully so, I think, and certainly politically, but just from a right standpoint, then rolled back 52 cents uh, per thousand to build up a little bit of reserve. So, but at 60 cents, they could eventually, at 60 cents, they could open them all 40 hours. Now, I don't know if you want to have, if, and I'm, this is nothing against Prospect or any of the smaller communities, but I don't know if you want to, if that makes strong economic sense to leave, you know, to, to leave a, a library like it, now, which is very small, quite honestly, but still open 40 hours a week, I don't know. Um, so, but again, that's up to the that's up to the, the governing body now, the the, the uh, library commissioners. Are, I'm not exactly sure what they're calling themselves, but directors or whatever the case. So that's up to them. I am meeting with uh, with the chair. She called and asked for a meeting next week. I don't know what she wants to talk about. But anyway. Well, in some of those communities, it, the library can be a real hub, you know, a hub of community because they don't have that much there. For example, Prospect and New Falls. But when I taught at North Bend out of Snoqualmie, you know, Snoqualmie School District, we had a library across the street from the school. And I can tell you that thing got used. We used it as our, our library for the school. But man, that place was humming all the time. Well, that's why Rouge is. If you go up to Rouge, it's right next door to the school up there. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, in, it's in use. I mean, one thing, so I hold uh, all my. Uh, with the exception of Butte Falls, because Butte Falls is such such a small one, but uh, all my town halls and libraries, and even before I started doing the just visiting folks, I understand that uh, that they are the community centers, if you will, uh, and Jacksonville is a good example. That's their community center, although they're looking to do something different. Uh, but in the smaller communities, talent, uh, Phoenix, not so much. I haven't noticed, but uh, Applegate certainly. Bruce is another one. Eagle Point here. Is a, wouldn't you say this is kind of your? Uh, yeah. 
community center between if you will but fortunately see you've got yeah. you've got a nice meeting area over here yeah. and um it's the name of the hall Ashville. thank you Ashville. 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 i should know that no, yeah. Ashville, yeah. right so there next between to the two yes so so mm -hmm. you're fortunate in that regard uh and, and it's it's not it's not that way necessarily in ashland and in medford that the the, uh, the room gets used a lot but i would not call it a community center so but i certainly understand your point but uh, it takes money to, to, to do that. Yeah, I'm kidding. There are a lot of volunteers. Or, and, and there are a lot of volunteers. Yeah. You know, the, the other argument, and, and, and it, was a, it was a good argument, if you will, or a good point, it, when the ballot measure was up, and there were several folks that said, do we need 14 libraries? You know, Jackson County is, is really unique to have 12 and not 11 incorporated cities in, in, a, in a, a county of only 2,800 square miles. I mean, that's, that's pretty amazing. If you go you look at all the counties around us, uh, Lake, Lakeview, Klamath, Klamath Falls, uh, Josephine County, Grants Pass, and the only other incorporated is Cave Junction. Over to Coos, uh, to Curry rather, you got uh, um, Gold Beach and Brookings. Go up to Coos, you go to Coos Bay. So, but then you come to Jackson County, and you just you know you start at Prospect and move right on, move right on down through. And so uh, it's, it's so in each one of the I guess my point is is that each one of those communities then believe in, in, that they should they need a, a place to meet, and that comes to your point about having a, a community center or a gathering place. Yeah, it used to be the high school. Those yeah, guys. that's you know that's that's true. That, that that is true. Back before All the, the life was, uh, activities, everything revolved around the schools. Yeah. When I was at Talent, uh, graduated from Talent High School in 1960, uh, <clears throat> but uh, that was the new high school, which is now the junior high school. But uh, that was that library or the gym was was the, the gathering place of Talent. But now it's a library, so. Gosh, you only graduated six years before I did. And Dennis Smith. <laughs> yeah, oh my so like God. A few years ago. Gee, Don, you're not that old. I don't think. <laughs> I got to say. No, I don't think so. It's amazing when I when I uh, when I hit seventy, I thought, you know, I used to think anybody over fifty was really old. <laughs> and seventy, it's amazing how young seventy is. I, you yeah. know, I mean, it it, it really is. Uh, uh, now, I'm obviously not as young as I was at 50, but that is, I'm sure that, that uh, teenagers or young people look at somebody my age or our age or something, and, uh, was, that's an old guy. So if you're too alive, if you've been blessed, with, if you've been blessed with any health at all. Mm -hmm. I've had the fortune great uh, opportunity to deal with young people, so I kind of teach you. From a different perspective, we had a superintendent one time at our opening ceremony for the year. He said, we as educators have an opportunity to have an extended childhood and to relate to the people we deal with every day. It has to be that way, and that's true. Otherwise, we'd never be able to communicate. But, and, that's a good perspective. But I think it helped keep me young. I look at my friends, and I think, God, I can't do that. Pow! <laughs> can I? <laughs> I hope not. Psychologically and physically. But sometimes. <laughs> so other libraries, what else? What is what uh, what interesting things, what questions? Kevin Kevin's been to several town halls. Good evening. Welcome. Hi, Hi how are you? Good, thank you. How are you? Well, I'm dry. <laughs> Don's country. Mike Owen. Mike, nice to meet you, sir. Mm, good. Linda? Nice to meet you. Hi, nice to meet you, sir. Oh. We're just kind of kicking off with that. These town I'll stand now. I've got, got a lady in the room I'll stand. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, you're out somewhere now. Well, I guess. <laughs> but uh, it is uh, the, the, the uh, protocol for, for these town halls has just been it's, uh, it's the folks who comes meeting. So I'm not here to make a presentation at all. I'm here to answer questions as best I can about things that involve the county. And, and uh, 
as such. So it's just an open, I'll take, I won't duck any answers if I don't know the, or questions. If I don't know the answer, I'll tell you and I'll see if I can find one. But if also, if it's on an issue that I have nothing to do with as a county commissioner, I won't, I won't go down that road. So, so with that, yes, sir. I got a question for you. Good. Yeah. <clears throat> you guys, the sheriff department, they, you guys oversee his budget, right? We oversee his budget, yes, sir. Okay, okay, I got a question for you. Okay. Burl Brown, you know who Burl Brown is? I do. Okay. You know the history with him and Winters? Pardon me? The history? Well, I guess what I'm questioning is Burl Brown has never been in the military. He's never went to any police academy, but he's a sheriff. Okay. Mike Winters, and this just a few, and now I'm not, I'm just a legitimate question. Here a few years ago, I had Burl flying his helicopter up and down the Greenway, tracking up homeless people. Okay. Which maybe that, may, I'm not here to argue that. What my question is, is why is he paying him hundreds and hundreds of dollars an hour to fly around that helicopter when a dog and a cop could have done the same thing? Well, I can't speak to, a, to the specific, okay? So let's not, let, me, let me back up and explain how the budget works for the Sheriff's Department. Sheriff is, uh, the Sheriff is, in the Oregon Constitution, is an interesting animal, if you will. He or she, the office, let me leave okay. it at that. The office is, in of itself, is, is almost invulnerable. Then. So, as an elected official, as a sheriff, he, he, and we'll just use he, because that's, in this case it is he, okay? So, once he gets, once he gets that budget, whatever that amount of money is, then it's, it's his to spend however he sees fit, okay? So, except for like, uh, for the wages and such, that's negotiated through the, through the county okay. and through the administration. We do the negotiating, but after that, after getting past personnel, then he can, in this case, he can spend it. If he wants to put, if he wants to go out and try to uh, eradicate uh, marijuana groves and hiring Burl Brown or whomever helicopters to do that, to fly over and such, then he can do that. Now, where the county commissioners or the budget committee, really, in this case, when we do budgets, so if, if we feel like, like he is being out of line, then the, the, we, that's, that's, our, that's our stick. It's the only okay, stick we okay, have. Okay. We can't tell him about anything else, except when it comes to budget time, we can say, okay. So what he does then, just like any department, I don't think he's different as an elected, office, uh, elected official, comes to us and this is how much money we need. We knocked his budget down in 2011 and 2012. Good for you. Now we did increase it in, in 13 and 14. Uh, this 14-15 cycle, and then 13-14 cycle. Um, it is it, the largest piece of our of our discretionary funding of our general fund. Is a share, but public safety is about 70 percent of our of, of our budget of discretionary, and of that, the sheriff itself, the sheriff department, excluding DA and, and juvenile justice and such, makes up out of that 70 percent makes up about 90 percent. So it's a big part of our, our budget. So we try to be very careful, and, and that question you've asked has been asked several times at the budget committee. Well, has it? Oh, I mean, the sheriff's sure. not, the, you know, the guys out in patrol, they're not getting paid enough to begin with. Well, well, I mean, well, that's my opinion. But it's the other thing, what I'm asking you, is it just, I mean, it's, it's waste, man. Well, okay, that's where I, I was trying to go, because I want to answer your question. I don't want to just beat around the bush. So, so when the sheriff comes in, and he's asked specific questions about an issue. And so in this case, let's talk about the helicopter. Okay, because we hear that a lot about that. Okay, Sheriff Winters, explain to us why. And so he'll go down. Now, he'll go down and he'll say, this is, this is where I'm spending the money on. I've got search and rescue, I, I, they're using the helicopter, search and rescue, the marijuana eradication, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And this is how many hours that I think I'm gonna need it this year. Search and rescue is a little bit different because you never know. Okay, and if I base the helicopter cost on X amount per hour, this is what I'm going to need for helicopters. And he can make a compelling case to it. I'm not a threat. John Rasher, my fellow commissioner, previous helicopter pilot, and, and very involved in search and rescue. So I kind of always look to him, John, is this, does this make sense to you? 
here. I mean, you're, you're, you're the, this is your land work, if you will. And so John watches that pretty closely. And Dick Rudisile, a chair of our budget committee, watches that. I mean, he's as tight as, as, as you can be. And so Mike makes a compelling case. He gets the budget. A general budget, again, like I say, how he spends it, that's up to him. Once he gets the money, it's completely up to him. We, know, we no longer have any say. Again, we have to wait till the next budget cycle if we want to say, oh, wait, wait a second, we think you've been out of line. Does that make any sense? It may not satisfy you, but that's the way it works. That's the way it works. Well, I appreciate you asking me. Thank you. Thank you. So, what else? What did we miss before we came in? Nothing. We were just, we were actually kind of, <laughs> yes, we're, well, we were talking about the library use. Uh, I was asked a question about how we can get the libraries open more, and we were talking about that in the, in the new li library district. Uh, talked a little bit about what's happening here in Eagle Point with two Eagle Point city councilmen here. Uh, but that was about it. It was just kind of more BS than anything, quite honestly. <laughs> <laughs> I was curious to know, just on a personal level, why you're not going to run again? When I ran, when I ran, I, I said at that time I was running for one term. When I was asked to run, because I had retired from the private sector uh, twice, and uh, and so my wife at that time we'd been married for 44 years now it's 48 years, and I asked her I said uh, Sharon I said you know I've been asked what do you think and she says well yeah I thought we were probably going to get you some blah 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 I'm not by the minute that way but and, and yeah and, and she's been awesome awesome partner for, for all these years she says would you make me would you promise me if if you get elected I mean no if you get elected I had to be an incumbent and then I had to be a very strong uh, uh, opponent. She said, would you just do it for four years? And so I went back to, to the folks who had asked me whether I said, do you still want me to run? Because I'm only going to, if I get elected, I'm only going to do it for one term. And they said yes, and so that. And so I'm honoring my promise to my wife. Part of me, I'm being, going to be real honest here. Part of me, I'll be glad to leave. But not for any particular, I can take, I don't, and I've been pretty, pretty fortunate. I haven't received a whole bunch of bad stuff, you know, at, at all. I mean, you know, some criticism, and criticism doesn't bother me so much. Uh, so that's not the reason. I, uh, I will also, in being fully uh, open, I'm frustrated a little bit. Coming out of the private sector, I thought uh, uh, would be able to, to do some things uh, uh, certainly quicker than the way it happens. And then uh, some things that just doesn't won't happen and that's frustrating but that again is not the reason that I, uh, I'm not running. I'm not running again because of the promise I made to my wife and I'm looking forward to being able to spend some time with her but on the other again full disclosure I'll miss it. I'll miss part of it. I love these sort of things. Uh, I love attending city councils. I love the work that I do. Um, I've learned I mean, I came from the civil construction business, and I think I was pretty darn good at what I did, but I was pretty narrow focused. I mean, I've had, I had, to, I've had to learn a tremendous amount. Anyone does. Sit, got a couple city council people here will tell you that. If you do your job right, you've got to start. You're never going to be an expert, probably in anything, maybe one or two if you're lucky. Uh, but you need to know at least a little bit about it because you're the you're the policymaker. So you need to understand why you know budgetary concerns or whatever policies. You need to understand that. So you need to know a little bit about it if you're going to try to do a good job. And I've enjoyed that because I think it's good for my mind. I'm 72, and I worry about my dad dies of Alzheimer's, died of Alzheimer's, and I, you know, I'm, even though it's not supposed to be hereditary, it's something that's always weighs in the back of my mind. So uh, so it's good to keep your mind happy. happy. So that's been good for me. I've just enjoyed the learning process and the people I've met. I have. I mean, even, even the ones who, who don't like me. Yeah. Well, apparently your wife likes you. So. She likes me a lot. Years later, congratulations. She likes me a lot, and I like her a lot. It works out really well. It works out really, really well. But that's the reason why. You got to honor your problems. She does the good. That's right. Well, <laughs> yeah, yeah. She just uh, she sacrificed a lot over over my working career, so. Um, and I'm looking forward to it. We have, we have a motor home, and uh, we're going to jump in, the, in that and with some other friends and just head east and see what happens. 
Do you feel like the last four years, Jackson County has benefited and grown and improved, or Good there's question. a lot of people that are um, dismayed and discouraged and even depressed, I think, not just because of the economy, but because they feel like there's been, uh, I think people don't feel like they have a lot of control. Like, in, I think, is it in Bend, the commissioners can fire the sheriff or ask him, remove him from office? I, one of the counties they can. No, no? state constitution doesn't allow. The whole, He's an elected. Any, the, maybe they the sheriff, him. They, they can do a chief of police or something, not the county commissioners, but county sheriffs is is constitutionally some elected official, and and the only his or her only boss is a public. They can be recalled. They cannot be reelected. But uh, no commissioner or board of supervisors or judge, county judge in the eastern small or large counties, but smaller popular counties have no control over. Do you feel like the commissioners in Jackson County had enough, and do you feel like that you were able to move it forward so that the people aren't feeling discouraged or dismayed? Well, I, I, I can't. I can't. I can't. Uh, uh, I have no control how people feel. All I can do is try to do the, the best that, that I can find. And, and these town halls is one of the ways of doing that, attending city council. You're trying to get out into the county uh, and, and meet people and have give people opportunity to ask the questions they want to ask. I may not give the right answers as far as they're concerned, but I'll give an answer. And so I think if, if I have a legacy, and I don't set out trying to set a legacy, but I, and this may sound uh, egotistical, but I, I think the, one of the main things I've done is put a face on Jackson County government and uh, somebody that's approachable, somebody that listens. I'm very moderate. I'm right in the middle of the road, if you will. Uh, so I'm not here or I'm not here. So I think people really recognize that. And now, some people don't like that, but uh, they recognize that. And so I'm going to give you an honest answer to what I think is best for Jackson County, because, and, and the other thing about, now this wasn't part of my reasoning for not running for re-election, but by not running for re-election, it's liberating. I don't have to worry about a, a voter base. I don't have to worry about, boy, this decision, when I made this decision, that's going to kill me when I run through it. That's going to come back and bite me when I run for re-election. See, I would have made that, I'd mean, like to think I would have made the same decision no matter what, but I've got to say it is liberating. I don't, I don't have to worry about that, so I can, Vote and, and work on the way that I think is best. I think is best for Jackson County. Now, as far as try to get to your answer here, do I think of, have we have we pushed? Uh, is Jackson County better off now than it was four years ago? And I think that's a great question. And I would have to say, I think from a financial standpoint, we're we're in excellent shape. I'm proud of that. I'm proud of what we've done uh, as far as some of the capital projects that we've done. People we put to work without raising one penny of taxes, uh, except the library one who did, did just passed. Okay, and the, and the voters voted for that. But we don't. We could. We could apply fees like most cities do. I mean, they, they can do that statutorily. And by our, we can't just say, well, just we'll just put in. A, you know, we'll just we'll just do something like that. We can do some of that, and some of it we can't. Uh, I have to admit, I did look at that very seriously when, we, when the library issue first came up three years ago. It looked like we were going to have to make some drastic cuts. Uh, but uh, that didn't happen. Uh, mainly through the work of my fellow commissioner, John Rasher, and I appreciate that. But we've done a lot of good things. Uh, disappointing that we have not been able to do more with our natural resources. But you know, that battle has been being fought, has been for the last 30 some years and when we've had uh, with some previous uh, commissioners that worked really hard Sue Capellas, C.W. Smith, Jack Walker, uh, just to name a few of them have, have gone toe-to-toe um, uh, -to -toe with the federal government trying to do something. We've tried to carry that on uh, especially through again through through Commissioner Rasher's efforts and, and Commissioner Breidenthal is working hard on that as well. It just I've seen more, at least, conversation around the issue. When I talk about natural resources, I'm mainly talking about timber. I've seen more, more conversation, but at the end of the day, 
we're no closer right now than we were when we came in office four years ago. And I got to tell you, four years from now, I don't know if we'll be any closer. I mean, there are those who say that well, we just go take the land, you know, look at Arizona or, or where New Mexico or wherever. We've looked at that. We've looked at that. And some people chastise us because we, they think we could do more. We don't think we can uh, from a legal standpoint. So, and as far as not having a say or, or feeling like, uh, I forget how you, how you put it, uh, in, in government, I think, unfortunately, that's not just in Jackson County. I think we all feel a little bit disenfranchised as the federal government has grown, as our state governments have grown, and our local governments have grown also. Uh, it's not the old town hall concept where we all get around like this and we sit down and say, okay, what's our issues? Write them up on a blackboard and say, what's our issues? And let's just take care of that. And, you know, those days are gone. You know, it's a complicated world. I mean, I think we all, well, I don't know if we all do, but it may be long for a simpler time in life where you felt like, boy, you, I could go up and talk to, I, you know, it's interesting. I was a history major in school. That's what I was going to teach history. But uh, up and up through uh, through Grant's administration, uh, a citizen could walk in the White House at any time he wanted to, or she wanted to, at any time. Didn't have to make an appointment. You know, uh, well, things have happened to change that, and so, but but we don't have you know we don't have that access uh, so much anymore. Uh, so people, I think that frustrates people. And again, that's kind of certainly around one of the reasons why I do this. Now, that's no, I'm not even beginning to compare that, but that's that's a whole idea of doing this, at least coming out and, and, and listening to people. And even though uh, those may feel that I haven't done anything about something or whatever that is. So I, that's a long answer to your question. I don't know if I even get close to answering. Uh, it's just like, where is everybody now? Mm -hmm. Tom? First, I'd like to say, as you know, I've been, I'm a relative newcomer here, and I have learned a tremendous amount about county government, <clears throat> city government, politics in general, <clears throat> which has all been good for me. I'm going to miss your town hall meetings. I'm curious to see whether any of your successors will uh, do the same sort of thing. I hope they do, because it's... It's very healthy. Well, I appreciate that. I have encouraged, I have met with each, each well, except for, for uh, Kurt Chancellor, well, and Kurt Ankerberg, I haven't met with the, the, neither one of them have, have asked to. But all the other, the other uh, candidates, uh, I've met with them, and, uh, uh, and I have said to each and every one, whomever should get elected, that I would hope that they would do this. I said, I did. If, 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 even if it was only self-serving, and I'm just going to get you try to be as honest as I can, even, which in this case it wasn't because I'm not running for anything, but even if it was self-serving, it, it, it makes, it, it, from a political standpoint, I don't see why people won't get out and do this. Right. I mean, I agree. Right, right? It makes no sense to me, if, as, a, as a politician, you know, why wouldn't you get out and meet, the, because if you're going to run again sometime, you're going to need those folks. Uh, but, and again, that's not the reason I do it, but I think it's just a good, a good idea. Uh, and, uh, and, and when I said earlier, what, what legacy do I have? I think by, by attending city council meetings uh, and these town halls, I think I've put a face in. And, and also, I think I've helped build relationships. The, Med, the city of Medford and Jackson County used to be at each other's throat. We're not any longer. Now there's been a different city manager at Medford that's part of it. But we, we, have, a, we have a good relationship now. Uh, we've built something. Uh, a pretty decent relationship, I think, uh, with, the, with the city of Eagle Point and, and, and those, even, you know, Shady Cove and Gold Hill. You know, Gold Hill used to be the place where everybody went to, to fight. Uh, I think that they've come a long ways. Uh, we have a good, a, a good relationship. So, so I'm, I'm proud of that. I, I will say, uh, I'm not a prideful man, but I'm really proud of that. I think we're much better off from that standpoint. Now, people can say, well, okay, then that's all fun. That's all, you know, goombaya stuff. But I think it carries on. And that's one of my regrets for not doing, being able to do this for four more years. But I think that's when you start seeing things get 
done at a local level, at a local level, uh, as opposed to at a national level. I'm, I'm not a national politician. I don't. I mean, I will attend both Democrat and Republican when the, the senators are in town or when Congressman Walden's, Walden's in town. I'll attend their, their meetings, uh, but I don't, you know, I'm worried about what happens here in Jackson County. Now, even though, I mean, obviously those folks have a lot to do with what happens here in Jackson County anymore with our with our system the way it is, but I just think I, there's some I do have a question here. too. Uh, a few nights ago, I did go to that meeting that the BLM had about the land out between the table rocks. Uh -huh. And my first question would be, um, what do you think the impact will be on the county? Um, <clears throat> secondly, I asked the uh, BLM man that was basically running that meeting, and he kind of skated around the answer. And my question was, have you yet, or have you scheduled coordination meetings with Jackson County? Okay. So, from from your viewpoint, have they in fact started any coordination with you regarding what they're planning on doing so with that? Were you weren't at our meeting on Tuesday? No. I, See, I there you go. Be, okay. Well, we had one. I, I meant to be there. Yeah. And had a yeah. We had we had the BLM in. We asked them to come in, and uh, we talked about that. We expressed our concerns. We want to know what their plans were with the new boundaries. Uh, and uh, proposed boundaries and the temporary conditions that they have now on, on the lands that they do have and uh, they're actually not because of us but because of a public meeting that they had previous uh, they're thinking about reducing the, that boundary size hmm. the thing to try to remember in this particular specific instance is that their rules will not apply to anything that is that any private land which was in that boundary. So, for example, I am not an artist. The table rocks, okay, the river here, okay. Uh, so the way that the existing. Uh, Land, you know, the, the, the Nature Conservancy just sold them, gave them, or gave them that land they bought on here. So, right now, their existing area goes along here and then down here and then up here. Okay, this is Sam's Valley Road, Table Rock down here. Um, their new proposed area it goes like here. Okay, now these are, this is all private land here. John Rasher's land is right here. This is all, all private land. Okay, their, their uh, uh, restrictions on unleashed dogs, uh, no firearms, uh, no motorized vehicles, only this area would be the area, but the only place it would, the only place that it would, was on the BLM land. Even though the private land here was is in this new boundary they're putting, restrictions would not count. But here's the here's the nose of the camel part, and he was very honest with what they're doing. So. What they would like to do eventually is that what they would like to do as they as they get funding and such, they'd like to eventually approach private landholders and buy the land. And eventually turn this all into. So all those rules would apply through in this here. So we ask them the question. First of all, uh, let me back up to a second. This property up here, the old, the Neary property, that was there forever, and that was up for sale for a long time. No private person ever stepped up to buy that. The BLM finally ended up buying it. That's this big section right in here. So, but we asked them, because we'd heard rumors that the intent was eventually to, to turn this in to another national monument. 
So we asked, now remember, these are just staff people here, you know, this is just folks here in the, out of the Medford BLM office. Uh, so, but he said, to his knowledge, his and her, that that was not the intent. Well, it very well may not be the you know the existing staff people's intent, and it may not be until, but who knows what administrations up, what comes up. Yeah. I mean, you know, that's the thing about uh, under the Antiquities Act is uh, Federal Antiquities Act. It only takes it only takes the signature of the president, and doesn't take Congress, doesn't take anybody else. So, anyway, uh, but. Tom, I, don't, I haven't answered your question, but, but I don't think right now they're, what they're thinking of right now is going to have any impact. Because we'll still receive, even though it's all the EFU land, we don't receive very little taxes off of that anyway. But as, again, like when Nature Conservancy bought that great big piece of property there, huge, I forget how many acres, and then gave it to BLM, yeah, that takes it off the tax rolls, so and that has an impact on us from a governmental standpoint. It also has an impact on the people who want to use it. But on the flip side, on the positive side, and we talked about this during that conversation when we were working on the coordination, is for those folks, this is private land. I can't just go up there. I don't know any, I don't know people who own this. I know John down here, I could go on his property. But as a private citizen, I just can't go and do what I want to do. It's private property. By the BLM taking this and turning it in, then all of a sudden it becomes public land. Okay, so now I may not be able to carry a gun, I may not be able to unleash my dog and just let my dog run or go use a metal detector and, and mess with any possible antiquities that are in the ground or something, but at least I can walk the land if I wanted to. So there's a tension. I mean, there's some good sides to that because it opens up private land, but on the downside is, is once they've got it, they've got it. And, and, and I think ultimately that's, that's a bad thing because I think Right now, the federal government owns too much land anyway, but that's just me. So I don't know if I answered your question, but that's where I'm at. So now the Cow Creeks own. All Cow Creek right. owns, yeah. All Tim the right Ranch from me on 234, the old Scow Ranch, and all of that right across from my property. Mm -hmm. So that's Cow Creek. Mm -hmm. And uh, Dennis Smith doesn't agree with me here. I think ultimately, when the casino goes in on the south side of Medford, I think that's going to happen. I think the federal government, in my opinion, will let that happen. And the Cal Creek's response is to put a casino right there on that ranch that they bought, and they own that land now, clear the oops, clear around the upper table rock. Mm -hmm. You're saying when, not if, on that casino. I think it will be when. I think it's a matter of time. That's my opinion. Dennis will argue with me about that. But I'll tell you, if I win, he'll listen to me deal. So. <laughs> and it will be expensive. <laughs> it will be uh, McDonald's. Now, Tom, I want to try to approach a little bit of your second part of your question there, because I think it's a broader question than just coordination on this piece of property, on this thing here. So, Don, has there been any progress on that casino there on the south side so far? Is that still just in limbo, nothing's happening with it. That's well, I'm as, sorry. The casino on the south side of Medford. And nothing's and happening there. That's, that's right still back. That's just still back. There, and just it. all waiting. All right. For the federal right. government to. Courts are going to make a decision on that. So, so yeah, they nothing's took, happening. They took down the billboard though, recently. Did they last? You mean the one that says no, no, no casino and nobody wins or something I don't like know that? If it's that one. <laughs> Somebody else was telling me there's one of the ones that's down. I thought they were both still up, but they had two of them, but I, I don't know. But I want to come back to the coordination thing here. And we've had this, we've had this conversation a lot, Kevin's been part of that conversation, about coordination, what people think coordination is, and, and, and you know, what we think it is. The, 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 uh, the FLIPA uh, Act, and I, don't ask me what, what FLIPA stands I know, but I don't remember. Uh, but it is, it is what, what it requires coordination between BLM and local jurisdictions. Coordination does not mean acquiescence by the BLM. What it requires is for the BLM to notify the local jurisdictions on uses 
any different uses that they plan on doing with the land contiguous or in the area of that local jurisdiction. So let's just say that's Jackson County here in Jackson County. So if BLM wants to do something, spotted frogs is a good example, they want to do something, they have to at least notify us before they notify the public, before they say there's going to be a public hearing on this or a public meeting, they have to notify us first. They're required to sit with us and, and then we're allowed to say if we feel like there's some social, economic uh, reason why we think that that's a bad deal for Joe Jackson County. And when I'm talking about Jackson County, I'm not talking about the government, I'm talking about the people of Jackson County. They have to take that in consideration. Doesn't mean they have to say, you know, gee, we agree with you, Jackson County, so we're not going to do it. But they have to sit down and we, and we, have, the, we have the opportunity to explain why yay or nay. We are seeing more of that now in the four years that, that John and I have been there than we ever, ever saw before. And we like to take, think we have something to do with it. Now, have we changed a whole bunch of minds? And, and, as a BLM said, okay, gee, you guys are right, we're out of here. You know? No, we haven't, but on the Spotted Frog, for example, the most recent one, uh, we did get them to change some boundary lines up there. On some road closures, we've made a little bit of progress on road closures. So we've had, we've had some, some successes. Now, the U.S. Forest Service and any other federal agency is also supposed to coordinate with the local, but it's a much looser, the, 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 the flip of with BLM is, is, is pretty specific. And, and, and so what happens, let's I'll make them back to, to the BLM. If the BLM, if the BLM just went ahead and did something, did not coordinate with, with the local jurisdiction. And actually went through it, not just saying we're going to do it, but actually went through it. We would have, as a local jurisdiction, we could sue them. And the only thing we could sue them was on, they didn't sit down and talk to us. You can't sue them and tell them to stop, you can't do that. But we could sue them and say, hey, wait a second, where's the coordination at? You know, where's the flip is at here? So, so that's really our only legal recourse. So because of that, they have been doing that. They, they recognize that. And we've even had, we've had a lot more communication now with the Forest Service, with, uh, with uh, NIMS. Well, it's, again, at least communication, which is stuff that we didn't used to ever get at all. So, yeah. it's, uh, it's baby steps, if you will. Maybe the new board coming in will take that and build on that and, and, and be better at that. Uh, I don't know. But at least we have a, a a lot more stuff now, much more of an opportunity to talk to them than we ever did before. Good. Have you met with Sally Jewell? Have you ever met with her? She came through Oregon. I don't know. Secretary of the Department of Interior mm, of the okay. Cabinet. But she's she's locked up a lot, unfortunately. Mm. Oh, see, shame on me, I don't know who she is. Sally Jewell. Yeah. Okay. She was recently last appointed, I think maybe about 18 months ago or something. Mm, okay. Uh, that's, so I'm going to plead, uh, throw myself on the mercy of the court here, only because the, we have liaisons, the, the BLM and Forest Service and Department of Interior is under John and Doug, so it's not me, so I get kind of the feedback on that, but no, so anyway, no, I had not. Obviously, I didn't even know who it was. Don, in your, uh, this is your last uh, town hall before your replacement? gets elected yes you mentioned uh, you mentioned frustration in your three and a half four years um, mm -hmm. what would you what would you say to your replacement to mitigate that frustration to make the job more uh, productive because you, you've indicated that um, the productivity hasn't been there over the past four years and not to expect the same or to expect the same lack of productivity over the next four years well, I don't know. I don't know if, if that's exactly true, Kevin. I think, and I've told again. I've told this to the candidates that have taken time to come in and, and see me. Is that the first question? I didn't do enough of this initially because I was a bit overwhelmed. I'll be real honest. I thought, you know, I'm a fairly intelligent man that's been in this community for a long time and involved a long time. I kind of knew how. I kind of knew how, how things work. Overwhelmed by what specifically? But, pardon me. Specifically overwhelmed by what? Well, that's what I'm going to say. So. There is federal federal and state regulations are, are, are so amazing, so 
of the myriad. It's it's a it's a uh, it's the right word I'm looking for. It, it's it's just it's a quagmire, and that's probably not a good word, but that's what I'm going to use because my vocabulary is not going to think of something else at the moment. That initially you just kind of shake your head. Okay, that's the way it is. Okay. So my advice has been to those who chose to come and talk to me, whether they take it or not, is always ask the question. I did, if, I, if I have one regret as a fault, I didn't do that enough early enough. I have in the last couple of years. I should have done it from day one. So that's the reason why it's been my advice to those who come in. Ask the question right away. I want to I see, see a book and verse on that rather than just, oh, okay, that's the way, you know. So, and it's a real easy trap to fall into. Um, um, so the people that are gonna get elected, hopefully they're smarter than I was in that situation, and uh, they'll, they'll do that, because you have to. But the problem is, once you start doing that, it's, it's easy to get mired down, and, and, and uh, so you're paying attention to counsel, you're always looking to legal, to see what's legal, and uh, you're depending on, on your administrator or that folks or a precedent and well this and, and I, the one thing I did remember coming in I was going to say well I'm not going to accept it well that's the way it's always done and I didn't do it under that so much but I wish I would have paid uh, I would ask a little more questions early and so I'll just leave it at that and that so that's some of the frustration but now some of the frustrations wouldn't make any difference how many questions I ask because the, the, again, the law is, is so, the statutes, ordinances, revise the statutes, administration rules, succession are, are, are so intertwined that it's just, it, you know, they talk about the old thing of cutting red tape. Well, that sounds great, but it isn't that easy. And so to do it, you got to chip away a little bit. It's a little bit like the coordination. You gotta chip at it, but you gotta start early. You gotta chip at it as soon as you can. A little bit here, take a little bit there. And then realizing too, sometimes you gotta pick your battles. You know, pick those ones you think you can win, at least on occasion, and then come back and, and work on the other ones. So uh, that's where the frustration came in. I didn't see what, <coughs> coming out of the private sector and having an executive position, I did. If there was an issue, I could take care of it like that. Whether that be handling an employee, now when we were a union operation, so I had to go through that process, but nevertheless, employee, customer, take care of the customer, you know, whatever the, you know, that, but it was just. Right, so you were a newbie in the government, so you were right. doing this, okay, and so. I did that too often early. Yes, in hindsight, which battles do you think uh, you should have engaged in perhaps earlier to make more of an effect? Specifically? Yeah. I think, actually I'm going to answer it this way, Kevin, I think it's more general uh, I, I, because it's, it's easy to do that, to kind of roll along uh, early, I mean, to roll on a little bit without saying stop. Now, you can be an obstructionist, I mean, you can spit in the wind, you can yell, and I'm not going there. I, I'm not saying just to be ornery, to be ornery. Choose you know, your battles. I'm not, I'm not saying that. You need to be intelligent. You need to know what you're talking about. But that's research. That's what you have to do. But at least ask the question. Say, time out. I don't know if you've well, been in meetings, but you, you have where people start throwing hands around. I'll stop them right there. <laughs> oh, I haven't got a clue. You know, Even if I do have a clue, I'll ask them to stop and say, now what is, what is Like flip, I should be able to tell you that, but I can't. Mm -hmm. Those, I mean, that's very simple, and that's maybe kind of a silly example, but, but that's just a kind of a symptomatic uh, that you just got to stop and say, and I'm sure these two counsel be like, uh, excuse me for speaking to you, but I'm sure they run into things like that, that, wow, I, you know, you look to counsel, you know, can you help me interpret this, you know, or, uh, or your administrator or your, your city, so, uh, and, and those people have been at it for a while, and so what you do is you kind of say, okay, well, they, they know what they're talking about. And I'm not saying they don't know what they're talking about. They, in, in almost every case, they do. But sometimes you got to go out and find out for yourself. So I don't know if that answers your question, but that's the way I feel about it. That was a frustration. And then just some of the things that has nothing to do with our local folks at all. It's just the way government set up and the, and the, and the rules. When you start looking at statutes, if you want to do, if you want to do 
something on a certain area, you gotta go, you gotta go to the Oregon Revised Statutes and take a look and say, well that, and then it kind of goes like this. And then you gotta get a legal, a legal reading on a little precedent, okay? And so it's, uh, wow, I mean, you're worn out. And then the other thing is, is the time it takes. Even when you're doing things right, and I understand the reason for that, let's take public hearings. If we want to do something, we have to have a first reading, okay? Then we got to give 30 days for a second reading. And then we got to give another 14 days to take action on it. And then there's another 60 days before it goes into effect. Now, and, and I understand the principle behind that allows the public chance to research and think it through and am I for it or am I against it, whatever, whatever. And what's my last chance for, for appeals and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But pretty soon you don't get anything done. You're three, four months down the road before anything happens. And I empathize because I've had a chance to review your campaign videos on YouTube. And that frustration is predictable because of what you said. I mean, you promised jobs. Mm -hmm. um, and you were obviously elected with that promise. Um, you also promised a 10% donation to economic development. Can you talk a bit about that? Yeah, I've made, you can go up, you can see my tax statement. I've, 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 I've done actually over 10%. Mm -hmm. And not all of it economic development, it depends on how, so I can classify some of that. But, but Sharon and I have averaged between 12 and 13% for all four years. And where's that go? I mean, so, specifically, pardon me? where's that go specifically? It's gone to So Ready, it's gone to, um, well, let, me see, let me think about uh, the, the most recent things here. Um, so already, um, the, uh, what's the company I'm trying to think of? Um, now we're not, and you don't want to hear about Habitat for Humanity and those sort of things. The site selectors tour, I was a, I was a charter funder of that. It sounds like I'm dodging it, but I'm not. Um, have you seen returns on those investments? I'm sorry? Have you seen returns on those investments? Economic development is pretty hard to see immediate returns. It doesn't happen like that. It's not throwing a switch. Uh, we have made, we've made, I'm not at liberty to talk about something, but I think we, we've made some strides in some areas. We've got some things happening. Uh, we'll see how those all turn out. but. Uh, Frustrated that, that more jobs didn't happen. I, I think every, probably everyone who runs for, for public office anymore, I mean jobs. But coming out of the public sector, that was a sincere, that was, that was my effort. I mean, that, that's what, and I had the job grant program for two years. And then things were got tough, we pulled that back. I was proud of that. Uh, we invested a little over $200,000 in, in that program. We did create some, we didn't create some jobs, the public sector created some jobs. We allowed some funding to help the private sector do that. Um, as everyone knows, if you read the paper in the last few days, we've made a new initiative out to, to see if we can spur do a little bit more on that. That, I'll be, again, I'll be honest, that wouldn't happen without me, so I'm proud of that. Now, where that will lead to, I don't know. But that's what you gotta do with economic development. It's not just something that, okay, I want to do this, I'm going to go out and talk to this guy, and he's going to come in and he's going to bring his business in. It just doesn't work that way. I'd like to say, I'd like to think in five, five years that I'll see, some, I'll see some grass on the ground. And I'll leave it at that. I'm not ashamed of what I've done there. Uh, as far as So Ready's results, um, I understand the Board of Commissioners is throwing more gasoline on the fire, if you will, with So Ready. Well, that's your opinion. And so I'm not sure how you can logically justify it based on their track record of inability to deliver a return on investment for, on behalf of the taxpayers. So you're that decision point instead of in terms of throwing the switch. You could have said no. It wouldn't have been a good investment for the taxpayers, mm -hmm. but you seem to be in favor of putting... I do because they've been underfunded all these years. Underfunded. They have not had, they have not had the resources to get things done. And so, and I have, and I have advocated that we, that we do that, and with the private sector as well, okay? 
they just not have had the resources. So that's a reason for this, for this additional kickstart. They have delivered on some things. So, and, and you've got to realize that their mission isn't just recruitment. Okay, it's retention as well. So that's working with businesses that are, that are right now here in this valley. We have 73 small manufacturers right here. Almost every one of them has been helped some way with SORA, either through a small business loan, some sort of loan from EDA, some working through the red tape. I don't think they need to be a bit ashamed. And I certainly know I'm not. For those jobs that require subsidies, they don't seem to be sustainable. Why would they need subsidies if they're sustainable? Because we know what it does for a private party. It shows, and I've got testimonial letters in my file that it shows, and we gave like, a, a, I think most of gave us $25,000. It's what it shows that government are, are walking the talk. Gee, we're open for business, okay? That $25,000 didn't in and of itself make a difference in that person's bottom line, hardly. Okay, but what it does show, that and working with our planning and building department, show that county government is here to help you, okay? It's up to private, the private side then to take it on from there. Okay? Yeah. Uh-oh. Oh, now you <laughs> Understanding their, their, their dilemma. Okay. 
Yeah, he didn't. He, he did respond. I was going to say that he did respond, and actually, <clears throat> there were some more officers being trained, and, and we were going to get a couple of those back. And I think that's passed. I'm not exactly sure. So, I understand what you're saying there, but we have to understand, and I'm not going to just uh, Josephine County, and, and I think Josephine County and Curry County are so much different than Lane County in that. Josephine County's tax rate is 58 cents a thousand. It's the lowest in the, in the state of Oregon. Curry County's is 59 cents a thousand. Curry County's is exacerbated by the fact that they only have about 5% of their land taxable because the rest of it's either state or, or federal lands. So, you could raise your tax rate to five dollars a thousand or ten dollars a thousand. We're not going to raise enough money <coughs> without timber receipts. And that and and if, if you remember five uh, and to, to then to, to fifty uh, that that the voters passed as kind of a tax revolt was is that as fifty then said, okay, counties, the state says we need to know what services you're providing and how much those services cost. Basic services. We also need to know the total of every bit of re revenue that you're talking about the county, every bit of revenue you're receiving. And that's what through with the libraries and the historical society, society, by the way, people saying that the county stole their money. But we had to tell the state. So they worked out this formula, says, okay, and just for simple math, you got three dollars per thousand in cost, and you got $2.50 in, or in our case, let's say $2 in, in, in revenue. So we'll let you tax at a dollar a thousand. That you, that'll break even. Josephine County, so where that goes was, goes is, is that Josephine County had a lot more timber receipts, a lot less services, a lot less people in Josephine County. So the formula worked out, well, gee, at 58 cents a thousand, you're being in good shape. Now this is before timber went south. Okay, that was based on, on timber receipts at the time. Coos County was exactly the same way. And when I mentioned Lane County, now Lane County is almost four dollars a thousand, but they're almost broke. But they've never seen anything they don't like to spend money on. I mean, they, they, they have no, I think, in my opinion, no physical uh, discipline. So it doesn't make any difference how much. And, and they've got a lot more value on their land than Jackson County, for example. Yet they're struggling. I mean, you know, they close their jails and stuff. So, I mean, I have no sympathy at all with Lane County, but I do with Josephine and I do with, with Cruz because they're only getting, they're getting such a tiny amount per thousand. It's pretty hard for them. Now, people can say, well, gee whiz, you guys, if you want more, more protection, then up your taxes. Well, yeah, that's easy to say to someone else. I mean, you know, that's pretty hard to, uh, politically to get through. Um, so, I, I I, I just I won't I just won't throw them under the bus. I get frustrated at, at the voters sometimes over there. Uh, I mean, basic services, basic public safety, it should be something you uh, should be able to fund over anything else. But that's way. So that's not even that's not answering your question as far as uh, what is that with the impact on Jackson County? <coughs> Excuse me. The impact on Jackson County. Yes, we do we do go across lines. We'll chase a bad guy or a bad gal across county. Uh, yes, under the marijuana eradication, but a lot of that was federal funding. Uh, but some of it came out of, out of, out of uh, I think $90,000 came out of, uh, out of Sheriff Winter's budget to do that. Uh, yeah, we are the biggest and the strongest county in our region by far, both economically, commercially, and, and law enforcement, our Sheriff's Department. And say what you think of anyone, I'm saying anyone can say what they think about Sheriff Winters. But he's made a hell of a change in this in, in the sheriff's department over the, his 12-year tenure here. It's not a, it's not the same sheriff's department at all. And I'm not campaigning for him. I mean, you know, he's withdrawn from the race. So I'm just telling you, I've lived here for 60 years, and uh, this is pretty doggone, and it's well recognized. So, because of that. And he is, or their department is, is, does get more and more requests. And yes, Mike normally, Sheriff Hunters normally responds. And yes, 
the, uh, the taxpayers of Jackson County pay for them of that. But getting back to what I said earlier about our budget committee, we question him on, on, on that a lot about how much. But we can't. Well, first of all, we can't tell him what what to do with with the money he's got once he's got it. But we're we're not going to tell him. Okay, well, we want you to stop at the Joe Jackson County line. No, we're not going to do that. I wouldn't want him to do that. Now, as an ex educator for for a decade in Joko, I've got to admit I got very angry with taxpayers up there many times over funding in schools because they have a high percentage of retirees and very wealthy <coughs> people. Their investments may be out of the county, which they are, most of their money, and their assets for taxing purposes. But the point is, uh, I remember a couple times that I was one that got a pink slip up there because of the lack of funding for the schools. You know, so I've been through it. I've been through the, the bad parts of it. You know, of course, I had a long career in different places in, in education. But up there, we got beat up a lot. And I saw the fire departments go private. And they went private at the time I was up there. And uh, I guess I have a jaundiced opinion, or a lot of irritation about the taxpayers in Houston County because they won't fund things. And the rich people are able to buy security systems for their houses. The poor people can't afford that. And look at the number of millionaires there. I had people in North Valley High School, kids driving uh, in Jaguars, XKEs, to school, you know? And uh, then you had the extreme poverty. But out there at Colonial Valley, we had a whole lot of wealthy people. But the point is, there's quite a disparity between the top and the bottom. And the bottom rung of people, I saw take a real beating over these issues. And I think they're very vulnerable because of that law enforcement situation up there. And by gosh, I know it spills over here. And whether they cross the county lines or whatever, we're still feeling the problems they have in Joko right here. Yeah, I, I, would agree. I would agree. They're here. Absolutely. They're back and forth. And so we get it one way or the other. And then there was one state police officer clear down one, uh, from 199, clear down to the actual border the night that the dispatcher got, got killed. God, it's her, I got a little block to her name right now. But the point is, a lack of law enforcement really caused that to happen. Because that person, and I should remember the, the one name. that was driving the wrong way, you mean? Yes, and put down by Ashley, was months. reported at a service station drunk trying to fill the tank on his car. And the person was reported clear up in Grand's Pass. And of course, there was a lawsuit of a bar now, I think, was connected, but I don't recall the details on it. But the point was, he got clear down there. And so it's another, another problem that came just a direct one, I can point out. There are many, many, obviously. Came right out of Josephine County and ultimately took the life of one of our dispatchers in this county. So again, we felt the repercussions of what they're failing to do in that county. It's not Snow, do, you think, do you think that that's, that's only systemic? I remember, what was it, uh, two, three elections ago? What was it that, that uh, was proposed? It was a, a search a tax on something, and the idea that the money was going to go into SP. Put more to put more troopers on the road, uh, and I can't remember what the, what the but the voters voted it down overwhelmingly, and uh, this was statewide. This was a, sta a statewide uh, ballot measure. I don't remember now what it was, but it, I think uh, a lot of folks, unless I need it, I don't need it, and if I need it, hopefully you'll pay for it. Well, that's the attitude in Joko. We call it Joko. But that's their attitude, get somebody else to pay for it, absolutely. Because they, I've talked, I've interacted with so many of multimillionaires up there, and their attitude is uh, simple. And they, don't want, they don't want to spend any money. So, but then there's also a little bit, that stuff. somewhere in that, since you're out of that county a little bit, I mean, there's a certain area in that county, and a certain area in, in, in western Jackson, right? It doesn't want law enforcement anyway. No, they don't want there. I mean, I, mean, I, mean, I, mean, I, mean, I know what it was like. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're I was teaching the game job for you. Know, I, mean, uh, I don't know all the cops go into. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I know. Uh, because those folks just don't want. They want to run their own. You know, their own. Their uh, so. Yeah. And I think that's another thing, though, in Jackson and Josephine County. I think they've got a lot of the leftovers from the 60s and the 70s and their kids and all and such that just don't want authority. 
And so I don't want to be good enough to pay for it, and I can kind of do my own thing out here, you know. So, but I don't know what else. I mean, I don't know how to answer your question because I don't, I, yes, Jackson County is being impacted. I, I will agree, absolutely. But what can we do about it? I don't know. You know, we can't build a big wall around the county, so I really don't know. It's a statewide issue. But I want to come back to what you said about that, that legislation. The way the legislation, and it was very controversial, so the way it's read is that if the county cannot deliver basic service, basic service, public safety, collection of taxes, <coughs> basic, basic safety, public safety, uh, assessment, taxes, and clerks, filling out deeds and so on and so forth. I think those are the four. If, if, if the county cannot provide those, now, as far as basic public safety, you know, the, the way the Oregon Constitution reads, the county has, just has to have a sheriff. It has to have one jail bed. I mean, that's statutorily, that's all as far as the Oregon Constitution is concerned, statute is. That's all they have to have. Now, is that basic public safety? Not hardly. But where I'm going with that, so if a county, and let's just use Josephine County, if they ever got to that point where the county commissioners felt, we can't do this. I mean, we're going to have to close the clerk down. Uh, in fact, we're, we don't have a treasurer. We're not going to be able to collect taxes. So the, the governor then, with the approval of the House minority and majority leader and the Senate's majority and minority leader approval, to agree with him, can go back to the county and the county and the county commissioners have to say, yay, okay. The state then can step in and pay for those services. They can raise taxes to cover half of that cost on the people in Jackson and Josephine County. The other half of that cost gets spread out about through the population of Oregon. So if you listen to, to the commissioners out of Curry, and Josephine, I've had them both tell me, if I agree to that, that's an automatic recall. I'm out of here. Well, oh, no kidding. But why? You know, we should be able, for example, if I have a fire on my property that I cause, I'm going to pay for the firefighters that come there and all the equipment. We should be charging Joko every time we cross the line to take care of their problems. We need to start billing these guys. We, we actually, that conversation came up pretty strongly a couple budget uh, sessions ago about our asking Sheriff Williams, are, are you keeping track of all of that? Maybe we ought to, we ought to, we ought to, you ought to start going for it. Absolutely. Okay, so here's his response. As he, he talked about a, I forget the exact name of it, it's about a cooperative agreement amongst law enforcement. Let's just say a local, say a point has a problem here and the sheriff comes, no, sheriff's the wrong deal because sheriff is, is the law enforcement officer for the whole county. Say uh, MPD comes out to help Eagle Point. They don't charge Eagle Point for that. They just do it the same way. If they have problems, say, in, in North Medford and an Eagle Point police officer goes there, they don't charge. Yeah, mutual so, aid agreements. We yeah, mutual aid agreement. agreement. Thank yeah. you. So so he cited that several times. So that's, that's the, uh, he says, I'm not going to charge unless it's something extraordinarily different. And I don't know if that ever happened. I never saw where it happened. So, that, that's kind of where that sits. Now, in the fire department, we have agreements with our mutual aid. We don't have a mutual aid agreement with JOCO, do we, for law enforcement. If we had that, that would be no, a different. Nothing but they don't have the law enforcement to help us. They yeah. can't help themselves. How can they help us? Yeah. We're, it's the other way. It's a one-way street here. I'm not liking that. that but that's because, because we're, the, we're, we're, the, we're the big boys in the area. Nice of us. Just like the United States. That's just right. I was thinking exactly the same thing. We're the, the world protectors world. of everybody in the world. Yeah. And everybody wants us to pay. Whether we world. like it or not. And, yeah, but we can't do it forever. No yeah. more than the people in Jackson County can continue to subsidize that. I, stuff. I agree. Okay, well, anyway. <laughs> what else? You guys should make a point. been awfully quiet. We're quiet now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a quiet place to go boy, right? A quiet place to be going on any boy, man. <laughs> you got everything solved. <laughs> solved. Well, I don't know if we got everything solved. <laughs> Actually, uh, some of the frustrations Don 
talked about as far as the federal government and the state government. And until you're in one of these roles, you don't realize, you know, how many thumbs are the on constraints. You. And that's I was in private business for about as many years as Don. And came into the same conclusion. It was like, hey, we can get things done there. And, well, and now I, we've got too many people looking. And I know I use the the uh, the phrase, and I think almost anybody who's been in public business that's run for uh, for a political office has used the same phrase. Well, let's run government like a business. I have come to find out you can't do that because it, it you use you can use the same principles. Efficiency, effectiveness, etc., value uh, driven, but your, your customers, or your constituency is different than your customers. I mean, you're there to serve, and you, as a business person, you say, I'm here to serve my customers, but I have a choice whether I want to or not. Okay, now if I don't, I'm not going to have any business, but I have that choice. Mm -hmm. Government, we don't have that choice. So that's where running government like a business falls apart right there. So, and I know I had to choke myself back on those words because I remember saying it. Well, what just, what, he said, let's just, I mean, let's just run government like a business. I think everybody running for office probably does that, but there's a certain amount of naivete. I mean, I can only speak for myself. I wasn't anybody that I was trying to blow smoke, but uh, there's there's a certain amount of naivete that I think that you just think, well, you know, I mean, that looks pretty simple. I mean, have you ever thought about common sense uh, about doing things? Well, I found out common sense doesn't work <laughs> all the time. I'm not that's being unfair, <laughs> but in many cases it doesn't. Look how many candidates keep touting their business sure. experience. Mm -hmm. Sounds good, mm -hmm. but you're right that it's a different world. Yes, it is. In fact, Dave Dodder got nailed on the military. I saw that one yes, of the was yeah. I like it. Don't, don't get me wrong on mean, that issue. But yes, he does present the military side as a military officer pretty heavily, and I can see why that perception is there. Uh, mm -hmm. In that government's not going to work that way for him. It's just not. It doesn't function that way. No. It's not a dictatorship, and no, you can't just say, do it and do it now or else. It's not mm -hmm. going to happen. And I will say, Tom, I will say, though, I think uh, somebody that's been successful in business, I think, uh, has, has a leg up. There's a reason why he or she has been successful. Problem solver, uh, know to handle money, etc. You can take those tools and use them in government as well. I mean, let's apply it uh, to, to our case here. So we can, we can talk to our planning department talk about efficiency and customer satisfaction. And uh, yes, they have to interpret the, the, the land use laws, but they can do it in a, in a, in a, uh, a reasonable amount of time and, and, and taking care of it. So, see, it's those kind of things we can do. When you're looking at budgets, although government budgeting is, is so different, because money comes from so many different places and goes in so many places, but comes to you. And so it's an incredible amount. But, but you've got to have a basic understanding of, of, of how money works uh, to have any understanding on, on what, you know, that doesn't mean you're going to be uh, an expert at governmental finance, but at least you're going to give you a leg up for somebody that doesn't know how to balance a checkbook. Yeah. Or someone who's never written on the front side of a check. I mean, so, so, so there's, like I say, there's some principles, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I think we're business people. I, I wish more business people ran, uh, and I've talked to my peers, my business, my own associates about running. I mean, I worked really hard the last couple of years trying to get, and they don't want to. They don't want the, they don't want the public headache. You know, they don't want their name on the front page of a paper. They don't want the hassle. They don't want the frustration, because I'm honest with them and such. And, and so what happens is, in many, in many cases, and this is a general, broad brush generalization, people run for the job. Uh, so um, I wish I wish we could get more folks that uh, young folks like Jonathan here. Uh, well, excuse me, Bill. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you got me by a couple of years. You, you got me by a couple to, years. To step in <laughs> to, to public service only because they not because they want to make it a career. And and I was asked a lady asked me why why I didn't run. I think the ideal. In my opinion, the ideal is, is two terms, eight years. 
first four years, you gotta kind of figure out what's going on. Some people are a lot quicker than I am, but generally speaking. <coughs> Second four years, you should be able to have maybe a little more results out of it. But I think after that, it's real easy. You almost come full circle because you then you almost become a part of the system. Well, that's why we won't be stuck. Because mm -hmm. you know, I've been doing it this way for eight years, right? Mm -hmm. So that, and it seems to be working, right? Now. So that's, so see, so that's the reason I believe, and I said this when I was campaigning, and that's the reason I ran against Jack, because he'd been there for 16 years. And, and it, I, I just think what happens is you just become part of the system. I think, I believe in a citizen legislature. People come, they serve, they leave. As opposed to now, once you get into governments and then you run and you run and you run and you run and you run. And you run. And, uh, but anyway, you get more people into the system. cycles. For the right reasons. Yes, for the right reasons. Yeah, the younger generation. I've seen that from a lot of my students. My God, I've got students now that are 56 years old, even from high school. That doesn't include adult ed, but we have a generation right now that are very, uh, I don't know, Craig Fronick, he likes, the, he talks about it, it be not being attached, disenfranchised. And it's true, I, I see that on Facebook, I'm on Facebook with a lot of my, I still call them my students because I raised them, they're still my kids, even though they're a little older now. But in any case, um, they, they say on there frequently, uh, they uh, just feel that they can't do anything or it's just out of control and they don't feel they can really be part of what's happening in society, and I had to remind you know, just yesterday, we've got the best country on the planet Earth. You need to appreciate this place, become part of it, and help solve problems. Exactly. You don't just say, because she was saying, hey, I want to leave the country, and I hate this country, etc. And she was talking about the situation in Seattle, as a matter of fact, or one of the situations, one of many. And I, uh, I responded to her, man, we've got the best country on the planet Earth. Be part of it. Get out there and be involved. Be active. And that's how we solve things. Get out there and voice your opinion, right or wrong. Just be out there. Like these meetings, we, this place should be stuff. And uh, when I was in the radio business for KOPE, for, I was in it for five years, many years ago, back in the 90s. I, I started, I went to a lot of public meetings, and I couldn't believe it, how, how few people really attended. And uh, <laughs> I, I don't know how you do it. I'm glad you have these town hall meetings. And I hope it does continue with the others, because you're approachable. I've seen you at the county commissioner meetings on a few occasions, and I've noticed that. And that you can walk away with and say, I was approachable. You know, I didn't stand back and just build a wall between me, myself, and the public. And that's great. I'm glad you did it. Oh, well, yeah, that's kind of you to say. So. I wish, it, to your point, though, it's like our, our, uh, our uh, and I realize 9, 9.30 in the morning is not a convenient time for most perfect people. And I, that's another reason I do it. So I'm not going to beat up people very much for not having, except for dedicated people like Tom who show up for almost every meeting uh, for not showing up. But, but we get very, unless it's a hot issue, something comes up, libraries, GMOs, et cetera, you name it, vaccination of animals, whatever, where, where you hit a, a hot button with a certain group of folks, we, we get very little. I mean, we have our work sessions. Tom and the lady from the League of Women's Voters, yeah. that's usually our normal audience, you know. Uh, <laughs> Kevin Felbert now. He's yeah. a, he's a, <laughs> a regular half. Yep. But but and it's, and it's not just us. Right? How many folks do you have? How many folks do you have? Come on. The, I tell you the only council that has a crowd every time is Ashley. I mean, it doesn't make any difference. They've always got a group. They've always there's always a group of people because there's always something happening, yeah. you know, in Ashland. And I don't, I'm not being negative. I just back well, up. But we that's the only city council where there's a four. Oh, you know, we have four. Two or twenty. Twenty is probably the high end, and four is the low end. You know, I yeah. went to a city council meeting in Gold Hill the last month, and I thought the place was going to be packed. In fact, I called Craig for a on KCMX and I said, Craig, it's going to be hot. They're going to have to have law enforcement. It's really going to be wild. <laughs> and so here I go into the meeting and it's uh, none of the rabble routes which were there. I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't even going to be good entertainment. It was just a boring meeting. I thought, whoa, it's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> and even like Congress people and everything, <laughs> uh, you would think you'd have all kinds of people there, and we just don't. It's just too bad. 
that people don't get out and see some of the people like Greg Walden, he's really a nice guy. Richards is a nice guy too, really a decent guy. And we've got some nice, good people out there. I mean, they really are. Oh, we've got them. I mean, absolutely. It's just, I think, you know, I think that probably since the end of World War II, um, we just, we don't get a whole bunch of, we got so affluent there for a while. Things were so good that we didn't have to be involved. I mean, just things were just, it was all some money from heaven. I mean, it was just, our prosperity was so great that there was hard to get anything upset about. So, but uh, we just don't get a whole bunch of participation anymore. Unless we polarize. And then when we polarize, then of course, then you get participation. But is that the kind you want? Is that the kind that, that you get things done? Uh, I don't believe so. I, that's my own personal opinion.